Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Rule the Waves 3, our Let's Play series playing as Italy in this new turn-based strategy and war game. Uh, we are playing as Italy, and you can see here right now the budget for us is 150000 I guess, per year, I think. Um, that actually puts us in reasonably okay, not sort of shape. I don't know what that sentence means, but... We're just barely behind France. We've got a considerable lead in terms of budget over Austria-Hungary, which somehow, despite that, has a much larger navy than us. Uh, we also have a larger budget than Japan and Spain, and our budget is close enough to be competitive with Russia and the U.S. Although, again, somehow both Russia and the U.S. have 28 and 25 uh, battleships, respectively. I don't know if they're cheating or if somehow they just built shitty-ass ships that are cheap. Um, so not entirely sure about that one, but you can see our fleet here has seven battleships. We have eight armored cruisers, 10 light cruisers, 13 destroyers, and six corvettes. We have just come out of a war with well, pretty much everybody, it felt like, um, and uh, did not lose anything in the war. So that's a good thing. Our budget is not great. Negative 2.2 thousand while the funds are at five. Um, that's probably because the wars just ended. The tensions are low, and so budgets have been greatly reduced. That being said, we will get a little bit of a better budget situation in a little bit. We have a couple of cruisers that are out for rebuilds, and then we also have a couple of armored cruisers that are being constructed and will be done in about a uh, year and a half. Our dockyard sizes are 19,000, shipyard capacity 150,000. Unrest level is four. It was ticking up a bit in the war, so it's a good thing we got out of there. And um, our tech is behind. I think that's the biggest concern here. If we actually go to the uh, research section we haven't made a lot of progress. We are 11 years into the game. We've made three levels of progress on machinery development, armor development, fire control, uh, turrets, and then ship design and uh, projectiles, as well as torpedo technology. We've made no progress on submarines and very little progress on everything else. Uh, the one area we've done well on is turrets and gun mountings, but we're really kind of behind in a lot of other places. I don't know if it's good, like, is it better to be really good at one thing and then just kind of okay at others or, or whatnot? I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to change my gun priority to medium. I'm going to change my explosive shells to medium. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and change my hull construction to high. I am assuming dreadnoughts come from hull construction. It could be turrets and gun mounting, but we're doing okay there. But I'm assuming hull construction is where that comes. So I need to make sure that we prioritize that and get that up a bit. Um, and maybe we should be prioritizing subdivision and damage control as well. I just feel like if I put things on high, though, I've got to put something else on low. Um, I don't want turrets to be low. I don't know what else would be low, though. Like, everything else is just... It is what it is, so... Um, ship design is where dreadnoughts come from. Well, that's already a high. I don't know. Every, this is, this feels just like work. Everything's high priority. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, our budget is, is decent. Like our, our research budget is as high as we're allowed to make it. So we could do more Intel to try and steal stuff from enemies. I guess we're allied to Russia. We've already, we've got medium research on them. We have no re Intel on Japan because they're, Tensions are worse with us. I suppose we do know the, according to the Almanac, the British are very advanced technology wise. They actually are the ones who negotiated the peace treaty. So let's go ahead and increase our Intel efforts against this nation uh, all the way up to high and see how quickly they hate us. We'll also do France at high Austria, Hungary, the Austria, Hungary is behind, aren't they? Yeah, no, France is behind. Austria-Hungary is average, so let's actually flip that. Let's put France down to low and Austria-Hungary at high. If you need more tech, only get stealing or events. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Anybody else advanced? Germany's advanced. Austria-Hungary's average. So Germany's the other one we should be spying on. We also were just in a war with them, so it's realistic, I guess. And then we'll keep uh, Intel budgets at low or are non-existent for Russia. Yeah. We've only got one month worth of money at the moment based on the current budget. So we'll have to figure out things coming up in the next month. But let's just advance to uh, October of 1901. By the way, hey, Newhouser, saw you. Saw you in the chat there. I know you're a big fan of this game. Research breakthrough hull construction, 1% weight savings on hull with hydraulic riveting. Nice. 
Research breakthrough on turrets and gun mountings. Power rammers. Gradual nas- uh, national rate of fire improvement. Nice. Research breakthrough on light forces and torpedo warfare. Up to 500 ton destroyer displacement. Oh, man. Our scientists had a busy week or month. So that just jumped us ahead on several things. We're up to five on turrets and gun mountings. Um, Almanac. <laughs> And now we're no longer behind. We're considered average. Nice. So that was uh, that was just a everybody catch up real quick. We actually just designed a new destroyer class, but I don't think we built any of them. No, we did. The mandate class. There were 300 ton. No, we didn't. We didn't build a 400 ton destroyer class yet. Okay. And we did lose a big chunk of our destroyers. So we're probably going to want to go ahead and build a bunch of additional destroyers. Oh, our rebuild didn't finish that month. Fuck. All right, let's halt the uh, light, one of the light cruisers here. So we're going to design a 500-ton destroyer. I think I actually did. I designed a 400-ton destroyer that I didn't build anything of. Uh, if we go to build ship, we can see here we've got the uh, death class, 400 tons, uh, which I didn't even build anything of, 29 knots. Um, but I guess that's better now. I can build a 500-ton destroyer. Okay. All right, so move forward one more month. Panto finishes its working up. The light cruiser partner rope has finished her reconstruction. Improved surface condenser, 1% weight saving on machinery. Research breakthrough on subdivision and damage control, double bottom. Man, our scientists are really kicking up their game here. We're getting a lot of research all coming through at once. I don't know if this is like the game's like, hey, you're behind. We're going to throw you a bone and just start giving you stuff and churning stuff out. Okay. Hey, J street. All right. Let's see here. So that one cruiser's finished monthly balance is a little better. I can afford to do one month at the current rate. We'll do that. Medium wing turrets enable secondary wing double turrets up to 10 inch caliber. So we really got the, the semi dreadnoughts now. Although I will say that my newest class of ships, the Roma class, I kind of like them. You can see here, they've got uh, three double turrets on each wing of the ship with eight inch guns. There's 12, eight inch guns on here with four 12 inch guns. Like, to me, this is a pretty good class. I don't even know that I would change it uh, quite yet. It's expensive to uh, to design a new class of ships. We only have two of the Romas, uh, but like, would it really be worthwhile throwing you know ten inch guns on there instead of eight? I don't know. It's a good speed too. Yeah, twenty one knots in this era is pretty good. We've really struggled fighting versus France. They they regularly have better speed than us. All right. Um, let's do this. Our ships don't all need to be in the active fleet, so we're going to go ahead and put the Kyodulios into mothballs. Should save us a decent chunk of cash. They're old. The THG class is going to go into reserve. And then the Roma class will be our active ships or active battleships. The Anconia class armored cruiser, we're going to go ahead and scrap this one. This is an old original armored cruiser design, and we're building more armored cruisers right now. So we'll go ahead and uh, leave, scrap this one. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put four of the Palistros into the reserve fleet. Oh. They're all not in the home waters. Okay. Um, or I can't put the one that's not in home waters. Okay. So we will do just the three, I guess, into the reserve fleet. Then we've got two in the Indian Ocean. Do we need two armored cruisers in the Indian Ocean? Um, And then let's go ahead and put... Some of the cushion class, not the rebuilds, but some of the cushion class into reserve as well. 
So we'll put four of our light cruisers into reserve. I also think we're going to scrap these Corvettes. They do trade protection stuff, but they're kind of old. Not that they're really expensive per se. They're not. We'll have to replace them. So let's actually keep them for now. And we're going to put... We're just going to put all the destroyers into the reserve fleet for the moment. Reserve fleet is sort of, there's three states. Active fleet is, allows you to train your crew up, keep them good, high quality. Reserve fleet is sort of slightly lower quality, slightly lower state of readiness. And mothballs is like what the Iowa classes were in the 70s, where they're just sitting basically in reserve status with no one really actively doing anything with the ship you know reserves aren't coming out and training on the ship they're just sort of keeping them in a material state of ability to be called back but considerable work needs to be done when you do bring ships out of mothballs and so it takes takes a while to work those ships up yeah i guess the corvettes we can also just mothball because even though we're gonna need to replace them probably they're, they're the crew quality they just provide coastal patrols they're not really about anything important i don't think so we'll do that and you can see our monthly balance is now back in the black so even though we're still building the same amount of stuff and we haven't paused anything we're back in the black we're going to design some new ships we'll do that on uh, jane in january so next month so let's go ahead and move forward to the next month oh boy during a coronation review there has been a collision between one of our ships and a ship from germany what is your comment the accident was a result of clumsy maneuvering by an ill-trained crew of the ship from Germany or an unfortunate incident, but nobody's fault. No, fuck that. Kaiser, tell your guys to get their heads on straight. All right, so we've also just unlocked early coastal submarines, which could be useful in the med. All right, so get your head on straight, Kaiser. You didn't give me any more money for that. I guess we got a very slightly increased budget for that. Um, okay. Let's design a new ship. The new design is going to be a destroyer design. We're going to auto design it. And up to 500 tons, 27 knots, medium range. Do we really need a medium range destroyer? Where, where is she going? The raider and trade protection abilities of the ship. We're not sending her out on foreign stations, right? So short range, as long as they're in the med, would be fine, I think. Engine set to speed, three-inch guns. She's got four torpedo tubes, although a heavy and crowded center line. What's the makeup of that? There's two fore and aft, and then there's a midship torpedo. Let's pull one of these off. We'll do a two torpedo. We'll do a two torpedo. Ah, I did the wrong one. Uh, center line swivel mount. Or did I? Hmm. Is this still crowded center line? In theory, no. So what if we get rid of the port side and then we just add a center, a, th a third center line? Uh, I don't know where that one was. Way up here. Okay, these are not the center line that I want. Forward center line swivel mount. None of these are where I want them to be. I want it right here. How do I do that? Uh, port, starboard, port, starboard, port, starboard, forward. Hmm. I'm not sure it matters, right? Oh, there, it's back here. Okay. All right, so we've got three torpedoes on. Is it going to have a cramped center line now? Too many center line guns and torpedo mounts. That's okay. Here's what we're going to do. We don't need a, an aft gun. Aft guns are for cowards who are running away. We'll have one gun in the front of the ship. A three-incher. Heavy or crowded center gun torpedo mounts will affect rate of fire. Really? Lol, no guns. Um, maybe that's a bad idea. I 
don't know. I'm a little torn on this. I want three torpedoes. Currently, our destroyers do not have that. I suppose two could be enough. It's not really able to fire a spread. We don't have the tech to do... I don't think we have the, the tech to do multiple now. Broadside torpedoes on each. The problem is weight. So, like, I could do starboard and port like this. We would have four torpedoes, two on each side. I guess we could do that. Um, that gives us four torpedoes and a broadside of two without the center line being crowded. Those guns are further forward than I thought. Yeah, I guess they are. How do I auto position? Auto plus. Okay, well, that wasn't really... I wanted to auto place this stuff. It just looks funky, but... You can do center line and two in the middle and gives you three torpedo broadside. The, again, the problem becomes weight. So if we add another torpedo here and we'll put it center line, not that one, not that one. Why do none of these center line swivel mount? Like I, I need to, I need to memorize which is what's where. None of these are what I want. Okay. Yeah, actually, I did select that. Whatever, I'll do that. So if we do this, we'll have five torpedoes on the sub. One of the, or three on a broadside, but uh, we're still okay. So it looks like we're okay there. We can have a three torpedo broadside, one three-inch gun four, one three-inch gun aft, no other guns on the ship. It's a quality one three-inch gun. We could do an aft torpedo mount. Like that is, in theory, we could do that, but... So short range, speed engines, so they're likely to break down. Cramped accommodations. What if we do normal? We could afford normal accommodations, which might make them better at receiving damage. We can't do 28 knots. So, hmm, what would be better if we drop the center line mount and we tried to get, is that better? Is 28 knots better than an extra torpedo? I don't know that a one knot advantage would be super useful. If we did get rid of the aft gun, mm, no, we can't afford 29 knots. If we made it a two inch gun, but at that point, why even have the gun? I mean, honestly, what, that might even be a good question to ask. So three torpedo broadside, I guess, 27 knots. One three-inch gun forward. They're a little slow for my taste. How did I save that weight? 25 remaining. Oh, because I dropped the rear gun. I don't need an aft gun. Screw that. Uh, what about speed here? What can we do? Nope, I can't. I can't get up to 27 knots. 
could do a little freeboard, but they'd be bad in bad weather. I don't even know what a two pounder is. What's the inch caliber on a two pounder? Doesn't actually tell me the weight of the shell here. Two pounder is probably a two inch gun, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, we still can't, even if we draw. So we'd have to like get rid of the gun entirely, which I don't think we're legally allowed to do in the game. So if we do 27 knots, we could do normal accommodations. And I think we can add the aft gun. Yeah. So I can have two three inch guns, five torpedo tubes, 27 knots, normal accommodations actually. I really would have liked that extra speed, but in this case, we're going to go with normal accommodations, five torpedo tubes, three, a three torpedo tube broadside, two guns, one four, one aft of three inch, 500 ton displacement. And that's our, that's our speedy boy. What do you guys want us to call them? Let's see. Who should we name this after? Um... I don't know if you're still around Monolith, but I like the name of, uh, I like that name for a ship class. Although I never used the death class. The previous one didn't, uh, didn't even sail. Short range, whatever. Yep. It'll take a month to research. That's fine. We'll go ahead and move forward to the next month. A spy from Austria, Hungary has been discovered. What do we do? Austria, Hungary, you say the country that we're constantly at war with. Give them maximum publicity. We hate them. All right, let's go to the build screen. We have a pretty nice chunk of, uh, we have a pretty nice balance here. Balance sheet. It's about a thousand a month positive. So I'm, I can build six of these pretty much all at once and still just be able to support it. They will take nine months. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's lay down six of these things. And yeah, so our dockyards will get to work, getting some folks some jobs, stimulating that economy. What start date would I recommend for a first playthrough slicer? Probably 1890 or 1900. The uh, the later start dates when air power starts getting involved are it's a, there's a lot of frankly frankly taxing and and busy work. I really think the core, the best period of the game is 1900 to 1920. And, and 1890 is a good too. It's just, it's a much slower progression. Okay. 1900 is probably ideal because it'll get you into action quicker. It'll get you tech development quicker without slogging for five, six hours through the first decade of the year of the war where tech doesn't change much. All right. So let's move forward to the next month. Oil has been discovered in Southwest Africa. Bastards. Russia wants to extend our security agreement. Yeah, let's extend it. Let's stay allied to Russia. The, al the alliance between Germany and Japan has expired. Uh, good thing our scientists are stuck on 600 ton destroyers, but okay, that's fine because I don't really want you to make my destroyers. I just built obsolete. All right, so who's all allied to people? Germany and Japan are no longer allied. Yay! Japan is still allied to France. Austria-Hungary is allied to nobody. We should go to war with Austria-Hungary. Uh, well, so that's the problem with going to war with Austria-Hungary, actually. They don't have any colonies, so France would be better. But they're still allied to Japan. We could try and go to war with Spain. They've, like, been a non-factor in this game, but they are there. And we are more powerful than them. Um, probably wouldn't be able to blockade them. 
Maybe I don't know how the blockade works in a not in a home area that they have two home areas in different regions. Can I take Dalmatia? I mean, maybe I could take Dalmatia from Austria Hungary. Is it a home area? No, it's not. So I guess we could take Dalmatia. That'd be a nice little thing to strip away from them. It's pretty valuable too. We had, for a brief time, we had Tunisia and Algeria during a war with France, but then the whole world joined against us and we had a revolution and, well, we lost it in the peace treaty. The nice, the one thing with Germany, if we fight them, Germany's, a, Germany's military is way better than ours. They've got 24 battleships, 27 cruisers. Like, they're way stronger than they were at this period in history. But the one good thing is they don't really, like... They're, they don't share a home region with us. And so I think that makes it a little easier for us to fight them. We're actually closer to their colonies. I don't know that they can deploy a ton of ships into the med. Granted, we don't, we don't have Angola anymore, which we had briefly and lost that to France in that war. So our ability to support operations on the African coast is limited, especially because so many of our ships are short range. All right, ships under construction. Four more months for those rebuilds. I want to get more of my light cruisers rebuilt. So that rebuild count, because it increases the quality of the guns, and I think it also adds fire control, I believe. Central range finder. So it'll make the cushions quite a bit better. But I don't have the money to do it. Six-foot rangefinder. Gradual national accuracy improvement. Hey, five-inch guns upgrade to quality zero. Oh, no. The cushions are... Oh, they're six inches. Well, they do have fives, too. We need to do another rebuild! <laughs> God damn it. Um. So if I do open up the cushion class for rebuild... Can I improve the quality here of the gun? Yes, I can. And it doesn't actually dramatically increase the length of the uh, the upgrade here. can also add central range finders, but then I need the weight savings, so I've got to do machinery replacement, which then adds a ton of time and cost. Replacing machinery is so expensive and time prohibitive. But I guess if we're going to do that, we might as well upgrade the 6-inch guns too. So then you're looking at a million per over 10 months. Honestly, though, there's no reason to do a Cushion 2 class unless we were trying to make them faster, which is obviously always a nice thing. 22 knots is a little slower than I would like, but I mean, so the rebuild is 10 months at a mil per. The build time would be... What would a new one cost to build? 18. So this is 9,800. So it'd be about double. The new build price would be about double, I think. You could just throw the, you want to go with the better engines too, and it doesn't actually cost any more. You could also just upgrade it to rel reliable engines. Spend a bunch of weight on something that doesn't matter. And then we also continually have ammunition problems for the uh, cushion cloud. What, the increasing the ammo just change the monthly cost? I don't understand that. Why did increasing, so expanding the size of the magazine, I guess, Adds time, but we always have these ships running out of ammo. So maybe we need to up the uh, magazines. So maybe 200 rounds per gun for the fives and 170 for the sixes. Still gives us a little bit of weight savings. So we can do that as the redesign, I guess. 
Because one of the, I would say one of the design's key weaknesses is lack of ammo. So now they'll have reliable engines. They'll have fire control upgrades. They'll have gun upgrades. The first rebuild isn't even done, and I'm working on another. Uh, all right, let's just do this. You know what's funny is the 1902 upgrade is cheaper. Look at that. The 1902 upgrade is cheaper despite being massively better. Guess tech just improved. So we'll have three of the 1900s, and then the rest will be 1902s. I have to pause some of this construction. Pretty much all of it. We'll start one of them until the other's complete, but that's fine. I won't forget about it. The secondary fives are good guns, I think. I think the cushion is a good class. Also, the Palistro, if we open this design for rebuild, she has 8-inch guns. Do we have quality zero there? No. She does have 5-inch guns on her. So we could upgrade her guns to be more powerful for only three months. Replacing machinery, I don't think, makes a lot of sense. I don't have enough machinery here to make... Ooh, I can make them one knot faster. Oh, boy. Is that worth it, though? One month? I think that... Oops. I think the... Um, improved fives are definitely worth it. That's three months at 700. That's easy. But... If I were to replace machinery, it's 10 months. Extra knot of speed... So, machinery replacement gets me one more knot of speed, which I guess could matter. What if I just go speed and cramped? Can I fit another knot out of that? Ten months isn't too long. It's only money. Oh, I forgot about the fire control. We definitely want to upgrade that. Okay. All right, so we'll rebuild all the police tro classes too. My shipyards are being uh, crammed with ships that I'm not actually working on. But that's okay. Oh, yeah, foreign stations. We don't have any ships on foreign stations. All right, we'll send one of the Romeo classes out that way. And then this is just like the the Italian shipyards anyway. Just a lot of incomplete stuff just laying around. Um, the Romeos are working. Ten months on the Palistros. 
We'll have the most refreshed paint job in the fleet. Uh. All right, a colonial crisis with Japan has arisen. We were asked for recommendations. What's your advice to the government? Well, if we remember, we don't share any territory with Japan, so they can't hurt us too bad. They are allied to France, who can hurt us. But France by itself, I would be willing to fight. So we must safeguard our interests, and if it's war, we are prepared to fight it. A little bit of a hawk. <laughs> little bit of a hawk. Tensions with Japan off the charts. Intelligence says Japan is allied to just France. France is average tech. Their fleet tonnage is way more than us. They have 15 battleships now, but then that, that didn't stop us from sinking all their stuff before. Seven armored cruisers versus nine. They got the light cruiser advantage again. That's why we got to rebuild our stuff. Okay. There's been an internal upheaval in Albania. If we send an expeditionary force to restore order, there's a chance that we can take over it as a colony. Someone must shoulder the burden. Send a force. Yay! Albania is ours. Ladies and gentlemen, we've officially expanded the Italian kingdom. Now, if we took Dalmatia from Austria-Hungary, it would be real nice. Also, apparently tensions dropped when we did that. Strange. The Adriatic was is Mare Nor, Nor, Mar, Mar, Mar Nordstrom, whatever it's called. Now I have to take Dalmatia. Yeah, but we've been trying. We've been angling for war with the wrong people. That's how you end up at war with a whole bunch of a whole bunch of countries that you can't beat. Um. Okay. And somehow our budget situation got much better too. Is Albania really that valuable? Because I guess like our income does go up because it it does add income for the country. If we go to the almanac here, we nation data uh, from possessions. 581. I think it was four something before. I don't think that makes a huge difference. Maybe the, the tensions going. I, I don't know. Either way, I'm glad we took it. I got three million in the bank. We'll move one more month forward. Two cruisers have finished their reconstruction. France has secured the Casco Bay territory as a concession from China. I want concessions from China. All right, so we finished the two rebu two of the rebuilds. We're gonna go ahead and resume two more of the rebuilds. Uh, they're both twelve months out. could probably do a third the interesting thing is that the rebuilds don't take up shipyard space which i find interesting anti-spanish rebellion is broken out in cuba huh go figure maybe the u.s will get involved they haven't taken it from spain yet all right You know, we've researched all that stuff before and, and nothing has changed since. We haven't we haven't seen any new tech since then. A spy from the US has been discovered. What do we do? Uh I don't want to go to war with the US. And look quietly and discreetly. Success is eluding you guys. Get a new job then. You've got one job, and it's to find shit out for me. Also, why are our relations with Spain so good? I wanted to take their colonies, not buddy up with them. Five destroyers are commissioned into the Navy. Cockburn safety valve, 1% weight saving on machinery. High tensile steel, 1% weight savings on hull. All right, so we're back in the black with all those destroyers commissioning. 
How many were they? We were building six originally, right? That's not enough. Let's build six more. We want six and we won't wait. I can't afford 10. Can't really even afford six, but. All right, so we're building six more. There's one already under construction, so that's seven. We have a total of 18 destroyers in the fleet with seven more coming. Holy God, look at Great Britain. They have 124 destroyers. Holy patoli, we are never going to war with them. All right, so that other destroyers moving into the fleet, face hardening, AP penetrator. You go, researchers. You get, we're behind. Oh. We just got a bunch of tech. All right. 1903. Happy New Year, everybody. The German government is interested in buying the rights to hull construction high tensile steel for 6.2 million. I'm not going to war with you, by all means. Give me the money. Because I need to get these rebuilds done more quickly than I'm getting them done. Um, okay, let's go ahead and get these started. I can do three months like this. And inside that period, we should finish these armored cruisers, which will allow me to stay ahead of things. Do they really try and do the two ship rule? That's interesting. UK says, I see you building six destroyers. I'll see you 100 plus. Silly little Italy. You know what's funny is for a long time, and I think this was true up until when Germany started building their fleet and the British had to bring a bunch of battleships home and sort of set up a, a new squadron in the North Sea. For a long time, the most prestigious and most important British squadron was the, uh, or fleet, was the Mediterranean fleet. Okay. Yes. Yes. Give them the best fire control. John, I give them the best fire control. Safe fuse arming device. Gradual increase in shell damage. Why do I always, it's like order of two or three. I get like two or three breakthroughs every single time. Still behind. All right, Polistro should be done this month. A world cruise for our young cadets is planned. What should we do? Send the newest and most prestigious. Send some average ships or some old ships. Increase prestige and tension. Old ships will give me more money, but lower prestige. Prestige. Tension leads to money anyway, right? Ooh, Austria-Hungary not so happy now. Mm? Well, I might be okay with that. You do have double my battle fleet. You do have quite a fleet there. Quite a fleet. What do the relations look like? Are you allied to anybody? No, you are not. That's okay. The other thing with the Austro-Hungarian fleet, at least based on what we played last time, is they are not super fast. All right, one more month. The Cushion has finished her reconstruction. A spy from France has been discovered. I'm going to handle it discreetly because I don't want to go to war with France and Austro-Hungary at the same time. I'm playing for time so that this Austro-Hungary number goes up and everybody else stays still. All right. The Prime Minister wants you to deploy additional forces in the Mediterranean to deter aggressive moves by the Austrian Navy. Um, current strength is 92. So I'm assuming when these ships finish their rebuild, it will increase, right? Two new armored cruisers. That's good. Austria-Hungary has proposed a five-year security agreement between us. No. No. 
We should avoid entanglements that will tie our foreign policy to an irresponsible and dangerous nation. Bastards, I don't trust you. All right, rebuild those four armored cruisers. So how do I meet the prime minister's needs? Also move this to the med. And then... One of the 1900 cushions can go to the Indian, can go to the Fortin Station or Indian Ocean. Um, okay. So we got about, we're running real lean on the budget. We got about two months of funds saved up, but in two months, in theory, we should have three light cruisers come off the ways, which will get our budget situation into much better shape. The prime minister has made an ill-considered statement about the U.S. The quote was taken out of context. He'll give me more money and it'll hurt my prestige. I agree wholeheartedly with the prime minister. Um, okay. The rebels in Spanish possession in Cuba have been eradicated. Oh, poor rebels. I was rooting for you, boys. All right. Three cruisers finish the reconstruction. Pressure hull increases submarine reliability. Is anybody else building submarines? A few. Not a lot. All right, so our budget is back in the black. All right. Are we still behind on tech? Hey, we're average. Never before I've been, have I been so pleased to be average. Mm. So... By the way, is our strength increasing? Are we making the prime minister happy? Or does it tell me? Is it the 116 number? Like, what number am I trying to do? Where do I see my power number? Not really sure. All right. Uh, we have a little bit of money now, so we can do... What's the destroyer situation like? We've got 25, that, or we will have 25. I get my destroyer sunk a lot, but they do charge into the enemy and sink a lot of them. Light cruisers don't seem to be a priority, although they could be for commerce rating. So probably armored cruisers or battleships, because right now if we fight Austria-Hungary, we will be blockaded. Um, the Roma class. So this is a two-year-old design. We've done a lot of changes. So what if we do this? Open it up for redesign. Oh, the problem is I've got negative two guns. And you can't upgrade a negative two to a negative one. All right, let's design a new battleship. There you go. We're not doing single gun turrets. Are you mad? What does it mean to be sponsored? Or sponsored? I don't know what that means. Can I do triple turrets? No. Um, okay. Additional beam added to the vessel to increase stability, buoyancy, and torpedo production. Good to know. Thanks. So, 
eight inch guns in turrets, 12 of them. So there's three eight inch guns on each flank of the ship. We could make them 10 inch guns. They'd be negative two quality though. Nine inch guns, negative one would be okay. Size matters. Could we do 11 inch secondaries? <laughs> Put the ship way overweight. In theory, you could do it. I feel like nine inches is going to be the. I'd rather the negative one quality than the negative two. But we'll have the 12 inch guns as our primaries because our 13s are. We don't even have 13 inch guns, do we? Uh, normal freeboard. We'll do a 10 inch belt. Do we have any immunity zone here? 1,000 to 12,000 yards against 12 inch guns. Our guns can't penetrate our armor at any range. If we have 10 inches of armor. 16 three inch guns. That's a lot of three inch guns. Uh, deck two and a half. Oh, it's so much. Don't we need at least two inches for splinter protection? Is that still true? How big can we build the ship? 19,000 tons? Um, so much armor. What if we do a nine and a half for the belt? I mean, when we look at this, though, the deck armor, nothing, even 12-inch guns won't penetrate that deck armor at, like, any of these ranges. So maybe we drop the deck to two. I want them to be fast. What's our current battleship speed? 21 knots. So we shouldn't make him slower than 21. Why do we have a long range battleship? That's nonsense. Medium is fine. We could make him 22 knots. Jackie Fisher would be proud. Uh, six inches on the secondary seems like a good idea. Central rangefinder with three positions. Make the turret dreadnought era. This is just the aesthetics. Nobody cares about. I don't think it actually matters. Okay. She's going to be expensive and take three years to build at 2.1 million per month. Yowzers. Um, all right, so... 200 out of 3, 130, 85, normal, normal. Do we have torpedo defenses on this hull? No, we haven't even researched the tech, so it doesn't matter. All right, so 10-inch turrets, 10-inch counting tower, 10-inch belt, 2-inch deck armor, 3 upper belt, 3 belt extended, 1 deck extended, 2 turret tops, 6 secondaries. Four 12 inch guns, negative one quality. 12 9 inch guns, negative one quality. Three or 16 3 inch guns of quality one. We're going to cut the weight a little bit 
just to save a little bit of cash, like dropping it from what, 19,000 tons to 18.5 will save us like nothing. Yay. Like 45. Well, that'll save us a mil. If it's six, if we're saying this is 69,000, I'm assuming it's 69 million. It'll save us about one four. 21 knots is good enough, I think. It'll it'll match the speed of the Roma class, so we won't have to rejigger our whole battle line, and we only have two of the Roma classes, so we can operate them together. I'd like to get it down to 18,000 tons. We could do that, I think. So we'll drop the counting tower to 9.5. And two fire control positions for redundancy. Okay, so that gets us down to 18,000 tons, which also matches the Roma. So these are basically just the Roma 2 class. They've got slightly better secondary batteries. Actually, 9 inch versus 8 is probably more than slight. But that those seem like a lot of armor on secondary guns. But again, they're 9 inch guns, so. How does the 12 penetrate? How close do you have to be to penetrate six and, or how much armor is that? Six. You got to be inside 8,000 yards. Mm. I'm just worried about a flash fire on those big secondary guns. Okay. What do you guys think? This seems like a good design to me. Also, who wants this named after him? We don't. We don't need to go Italian's uh, name on this one. We'll go with what do we go with here? We'll call it the Caesar class. Did I spell that right? Yeah. Okay. All is okay. Oh my God, it's going to cost a lot of money just to design. We're in the red. <laughs> God, I forgot about the design concept cost. And on that note, we're going to wrap this episode up here. I hope you guys are enjoying this series of Rule the Waves 3, our Italian Let's Play series. We've got some new battleships we're building. Hopefully we get them in time for whatever the next war may be. But until then, it is the historical gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.